All right, hello everybody. How are you doing? Fine. Okay. Cool. All right, it's Chandler Physics, Chandler Science, AP Physics One. Um, here to stream the last homework packet from class. Oprah Winfrey is here. Fantastic. So happy to see you, Oprah. All right. Well, uh, we'll wait a few seconds to let students kind of populate get in the stream and start requesting which homework they want to see. I know uh, I already had a few requests for number five, so we'll do that one here in a moment. Um, let me know what other numbers you want to do. Any other uh, homework, that's, uh, any question that's giving you issues, let me know, and we'll do that problem. All right, we'll, uh, we'll wait a few seconds so that students kind of populate. Oops. Because apes is easy <laughs> and physics is hard. Do I need to stream for apes? I'm just like vocabulary and, you know, stream and tell you how the planet is doomed and how no one will do, none of our governments will do anything to stop climate change because they're too greedy and short sighted. That wouldn't be a very fun stream. Maybe it would be. I don't know. All right. Any, uh, oh, Oprah wants to number one. Okay. All right. I'll just start number one. Um, All right, let's start with the numero uno in that case. Uh, right, in the pen. All right, let me scroll down. All right, number one, we got a frictionless, uh, frictionless bearings rolls, a cart on frictionless bearings, excuse me, rolls down a slope inclined at 45 degrees. So we know that this angle here is 45 degrees. Um, so it's frictionless bearing, so we don't have to worry about friction here. Yay, it's always nice. After being released from rest, the cart is allowed to roll for three seconds. All right, so we know it's initial velocity, v naught is zero. Time is going to be three seconds. I'm going to write down all my variables, just like kinematics, just like, uh, you know, just like I did before. Draw the forces acting on the cart and write an equation for Newton's second law. All right, so draw the forces acting on the cart. That's a free body diagram. So I'll do it over here, um, a little dot for the cart. I have the weight down mg. I have the normal force perpendicular to the surface. I have the, um, no, there's no fr I was about to say friction, but there is no friction. So I guess that's it. Um, no friction, we got weight, normal force. That's all there is. All right, now I'll go ahead and add in the components uh, of, the weight force, right? Because we're going to go for, remember, all of our vector arrows for the forces need to be all either parallel to the surface or perpendicular to the surface. The weight force is neither of those, so we have to draw components that are parallel, down the ramp this way, and then perpendicular to the ramp, into the ramp, like that. And the angle that matches with the incline is going to be right here. That's going to be the 45 degree angle. All right, so uh, draw the forces on the cart and write an equation for Newton's second law. All right, so the forces in the perpendicular to the to the plane are going to be uh, Fn minus mg cosine theta, right? Because the blue component is going to cancel out the normal force, right? Because they're both perpendicular to the plane, uh, to the surface we're on. So they need to cancel because we're not going to float off the plane or get crushed into the ramp, right? So they have to cancel. So they must be equal. So that's for the perpendicular. That's a symbol for perpendicular. And the forces, the net forces that are parallel to the plane are, uh, are there's only one, and it's mg looks like sine. Oops. I don't know what I was writing there. mg sine 
theta. Maybe you want to call this x instead. That's fine. You like calling this y. You know, it all means the same thing, right? Oh, George Washington. George Washington in chat. Oprah Winfrey, George Washington. I get I get I get a lot of celebrities, what can I say, you know? Popular guy. Saturday night at home, 8.30, 8.45, doing physics homework. I'm, clearly, I'm pretty popular. All right. Um, so those are Newton's second law equations for both directions. A, how fast does the car move at the end of this time? Okay, we have to find acceleration in order to find out how fast it's going it to be moving at the end of the three seconds. So I'm going to use uh, acceleration equals. Now, the only forces uh, that are going to make this thing actually accelerate is the red component, right? The red force... Uh, down the ramp, okay. The blue component of gravity and the normal force cancel out, so they don't do anything. So my net force down the ramp is mg sine theta. That's a g, sorry. Over uh, this is acceleration is net force over the mass. The mass is uh, we don't know. It's m. Doesn't matter because guess what? Look at m's cancel. Yeah, what do you know? M's cancel out, so the acceleration is going to be g sine theta. Theta was 45 degrees. Uh, G is 10, so 10 times the sine of 45, and I get 7.07. .07, it's called 7.1 meter second squared. How fast does the car move? All right, so uh, V equals V naught plus A T. Initial velocity was zero, so V will equal A, which is 7.1 times three seconds. Oops, not six, sorry. Three seconds, and that's going to be twenty-one point three meters per second. And there we go. Uh, so that's how fast the cart moves at the end of this time. Let's go to how far has the cart rolled at the end of this time? How far? Is the cart? Now we need. Now we're again we're in kinematics here. Now we have a uh, we have our acceleration. 7.1, we know um, our final velocity at the end of the three seconds is 21.3. Um, and now we're looking for delta x. All right, delta x, I think the equation to use here is going to be 1 half at squared plus v naught t. There are other equations we could use, but I think this is the best one, um, easiest one. v naught t, v naught is 0 because it started from rest. This part just goes away, right? So we'll get rid of that. And it just all is left over is this. So we have 1 half times 7.1. And t squared, t was 3, so 3 squared is 9. So it looks like delta x then is going to be whatever that is 9 times 7.1 times a half. 31.95, call it 32 meters. 32 meters. There we go. All right. Did you whip a nene? I don't know what that means, but okay. All right, so that's number one. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, getting a few more people in chat. Hello, chat. Hello, new people in stream. Um, post post a question you want to work on in the chat, and we'll we'll go through that problem. If there are questions as we're going through the problem, just again say the question, type the question in chat. Hopefully this makes sense. This is a pretty simple one. There's no friction, so it always makes our lives a little easier. Um, all right. So what else do you want to do? What else do you want to do? Ignore that. Ignore that. You heard nothing. All right. All right. On oh, question four, you had a mass of. Yeah, I think I. I think you mean question five. Yeah, question five. I think that I messed up on the key. Uh, I just I must have just forgot the one in there. Yes, I am interested in revolution, Mr. Washington. Thank you for asking. I'm interested, interested in a political revolution. One second. Um, let's see. 
No one else has asked for a All right. Oh, number eight. Okay. Jocelyn was eight. Okay. All right. We'll do eight and we'll come back to five. And so, yeah, on five, I think I must have just put nine instead of 19. I just forgot the one, I guess, on the key. So thank you for catching that. Um, okay. Number five. All right. Or eight, rather. Okay. A small card of mass M equals three kilograms is in front of a large card of mass M equals eight. Uh, a four of. Uh, a force F of positive 200 newtons to the right is applied to the large cart. For this problem, let quant let quantities that point to the right be positive. Draw the forces on each mass and on the system of masses. Okay. Uh, 8 and 14. Okay. Thank you, Jocelyn. All right. Draw the forces on each mass and on the system of masses. Okay. So on on M, on just the big mass, M, right, what forces do we have? Well, we have the weight down, Mg. We have the normal force up, normal force. We have an applied force to the right. Call that force A for applied. And then the little for the little uh, mass, the little m, is actually pushing back on us, right? Pushing back on us this way with a normal force, right? Because that's a surface. It's the surface of the box is going to push us back, right? Idea. Hey, yes, favorite student, absolutely. You know it. I've already written your recommendation letter. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So big M is that now the little M has also has weight. You know what? Let's call let's call this guy's weight big M G, right? Because that's our big M G. This this little M's weight is little M G. He's got a normal force also, force normal. He also has now he doesn't have an applied force to the right, but he does have uh, the normal force, right? The surface of the, where they're in contact here, right? The surface between the two boxes or carts or whatever they are. Uh, is pushing on each other. So the surface, this is a normal force from the big M card pushing on the little M card, right? So there's all the forces we have. Um, now you'll notice that the normal forces are equal but opposite. So they are internal to the system. They're internal to the system of masses, right? If we think of this thing as one big object, just one mass, right? It can't have an internal, a, a normal force on itself. So together they have uh, big M plus little m g weight down, right? Normal force up, and then we have an applied force to the right. The the um, the normal forces are internal uh, to the system, so they're not. We're not going to include them in our free body diagram for the for the system of, of, of carts. Right, I hope that makes sense. All right, what is the acceleration of the system of carts? Well, again, look at our free body diagram for the system of the carts. Um, is there friction in this problem, or I guess not. They didn't say that it gives them a, a coefficient a small cart. You know, large current masses. Large current masses. I guess there's no friction because they don't give it, they don't give us any um, coefficient. So we'll just assume no friction, I guess. Although usually we assume there is friction, but I guess we'll assume no friction in this case. Um, all right. So what we got? We got uh, we have the acceleration of a system equal is equal to its uh, net force over the mass of the system. Uh, the normal force and the weight forces are going to cancel out. So the only force that's left over is the applied force. So the applied force is going to be positive 200 newtons divided by the mass of the system. The mass is 11, right? 8 plus 3. So our total mass is 11. 200 over 11 is, I don't know, something. It's definitely something 18.2. I'm getting 8. That's, well, that's a lot. Uh, 18.2. Point two meters per second squared. All right, to the right, right? Could be said that was a positive direction. <laughs> One second, guys. Get a Texas person. Okay, part B. Uh, is it okay if we put numbers on the forces so we didn't get confused? Like, yes, absolutely. It'll say it's totally, not only is it okay, you should do it. Uh, so yes, good question, and yes, do that. All right, uh, what is, uh, part B, what is force, what is force at the small card exists in large card? Oh, I guess that was a, um, that, that's a typo. What is the force that the small card exists on the, on the, on the large card? All right, go back to our free diagram again, right? Uh, this force and this force are internal to the system and equal, right? They're equal but opposite. 
Okay, so if the if the if this pushing force here is 200 newtons, pushing on the cart here, and the cart's going forward, guess how hard it's going to push on the on the little cart? 200 newtons. Guess how much the cart pushes back on the big cart? 200 newtons. But the the little cart pushes back on the left cart on the big cart to the left, so it's actually negative 200 newtons because it's going to the left. We're at 20. We're getting up there. All right. Oh, you'll see it'll be up, don't worry. You're all my you're, everyone's my favorite. You're all tied. I thought I, I thought we've been over this. Everyone's tied for the favorite. All right, so that's number eight. Uh Jocelyn, is that let me know if you have any questions or anyone else who, who wanted to see number eight. Let's go to fourteen. There was a, a request for number fourteen. So let's go scroll down here. If there's a question about number eight, just probably go back to it, but I'm going to scroll to 14. There's a delay in the chat, but let me know. All right, 14. We got a, diagram, a pulley system with two masses on an incline. Diagram shows frictionless. Okay, again, frictionless, that's always nice. Plane inclined at 40 degree angle. Okay, so this theta here is 40 degrees. Uh, mass big M is 15 kilograms, and a little m is eight. Why did I write it that way? All right. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. So we put 15 mass on the incline, and we hang the eight kilogram mass over the pulley. Um, our ideal pulley means no friction or anything like that. Taking up to be positive. What is the acceleration of m? All right. So we're going to take this direction to be positive, and this direction to be negative, because that's what the problem said. All right. Okay. Go ahead and revolt, George. You, that's what you do best. You just go ahead and do that. Uh, all right. What is the acceleration of little m? All right. So remember, guys, when we have these objects connected by a rope, we're going to treat it like it's one big object, right? It, that The system is m, little m, and big m together, plus the rope. Um, we, we can't solve this problem uh, if we look at just little m by itself. So we're going to treat it like the whole thing. So we have to draw... Uh, if you write a diagram for both things here, so we have little m, so weight down, little mg, and the tension force up, the same tension force on both, and then we have going to have big mg down, or yeah, down, big mg. We're also now it's frictionless, so we have tension up the ramp. We also have normal force perpendicular to the surface. Okay, now look here. What are the only, now we're going to need components because we are on an incline. So let's get our components in. We have components, remember, if we're on an incline for the weight force, we slide down the ramp for the, our, our parallel component, and then we go into the ramp, drill into the ramp for our perpendicular component, right? And the only purpose, the only purpose that this, uh, the resultant vector exists, which is what, 150 newtons, right? Mg is 150. The only reason this guy exists is to help us find the red and blue parallel and perpendicular components. That's the only reason they exist. Once we once we find the red and blue, we don't we're gonna erase the 150 because we don't need it anymore. Talking about literature homework, really, guys? Come on, shameful. Okay, um, all right. So let's go ahead and set up our Newtons, uh, our sorry, our net force equations now. So we're gonna have a net force. Let's do one in the perpendicular direction, right? Perpendicular to the surface. So let's see. Uh, we know it's going to be zero, right? Because the blocks are not elevating off of the. Um, uh, well, you know what? Let's call it. Yeah, it's fine. We can just go, we can call it like this. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hello, new streamer. Okay, new 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 viewer, watcher, whatever you're called. I don't know. Where was I? All right. So we know that the net force is zero, um, like you know, in this direction, right? It's not being elevating off the plane. It's not being crushed into the plane. So what are all the forces in that direction? Uh, normal force. And then we have uh, minus the 
this the blue component of the weight force, right? Remember, the bottom angle here is the corresponding angle to the, the ramp, so that's gonna be 40. So mg cosine 40 equals zero. We don't even need to do this really, I don't even know why I'm doing it, we don't need to, right? We know that the blue component here and the upward normal force are gonna cancel out, so we don't need them. Um, we also know that the, that the tension force is internal to the system, so it's not gonna do anything uh, to our um, to our system of blocks, so I, the tension force is internal, so we can't accelerate the system. The only forces that are actually gonna cause this thing to accelerate are the downward weight force of uh, the little mg and this component of the big mg's weight force, right? Not, not the total mg, because that's going down, the one going down the ramp, right? Those are the only ones that are actually gonna cause our acceleration. So let's see what those net forces are. So net force now, for those guys is going to be, um, let's see, let's say that, um, let's call, this is negative, this is down, this way is negative, and this way is positive, right? Remember the pulley is weird with direction, be careful with that. As, as you go up this way and then around the pulley, we're calling that positive in this problem, and as we go down the pulley and over the pulley and down this direction, we're calling that negative. So be careful with direction, it does matter. All right, so down the ramp, um, we had the red component of the weight of the big MG. That's going to be uh, big MG sine 40 minus uh, little mg, right? And again, tensions are inter internal, so they don't do anything. And the normal force and the blue component of the weight cancel out, so they don't do anything either, right? Remember the 150 here? We only use it to find the components. Once, once it, the 150 has you know, served its purpose, we say goodbye, we kick it out the door, right? And we don't need it anymore. So, uh, let's see, mg, big M was 15. So 15 times 10 is 150. Sine of 40 is 96.4. So this is 96.4 minus little mg. Little m was uh, 8, so it's minus 80. So that's our net force. So that means our net force is 96.4 minus 80, which is 16.4. Now we do. Now we have done our uh, net force equations. We do uh, Newton's second law. Acceleration is equal to the net force, which is 16.4, over the mass of the system, right? 15 plus 8, so 23. Everything accelerates together because they're all connected, right? So 16.4 over 23. And we get 0 0.7. 0 0.7 meters per second squared. And it's gonna be going down the ramp this way, right? Acceleration will be in that positive direction, okay? All right. Let me go back and scan chat to see if there's any questions, unless we're just arguing about who's my favorite or, you know, literature homework or whatever. Now we have macro. Quit talking about macro and literature. This is a physics channel. Science only. Okay, I'm not seeing either one. All right, then. Um, stream some MTG. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, um, okay, no, hopefully no questions number 14. Let's go back to number five. I know a lot of students had asked about number five. I think I did number five in fourth period, but you know, fourth period is, oh, 15. Okay, we'll do 15. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, this one is basically exactly the same as the helicopter problem. So um, if you can do 15 or a helicopter problem was number nine, they're basically the same problem. They're very similar anyway. Well, let's do 15, probably a little bit harder, I guess. Uh, 15 and 11, okay, let me write these down. So 15 and 11, okay. All right, um, we got a crane of, a crane hook with mass uh, two kilograms, supports a load of big M is 10 kilograms, find the tension in the upper and lower cable if the load is 
moves is moves oh sorry is moving upward with a constant speed of four meters a second squared all right constant speed remember i told you the those two words are like should be a beacon to you right letting you know oh my god constant speed what does that mean so net force is acceleration is zero the net force is zero so we know that all the forces must cancel out right okay so um it wants to know find the tension in the upper and lower cable all right well let's see let's draw oh, our favorite diagrams over here so we have tension let's call this t u for tension upper and then on the big m let's call this one t l for tension lower the lower cable and upper cable and then big m we have it's weight whoa god that was not straight at all it was especially bad even for me okay big m g and this is called this little m g okay and we also have the tension in this lower cable pulling us down. Uh, but again, um, a lot of these forces are internal to the system. But we think about uh, the system as a whole, right? Everything is going to accelerate together and all connected. So what is what is if the system is, you know, both of the hooks are not both sorry not both the hook and the big box that includes the cable between them, right? If that's our system, what are the only forces? that are affecting the system. Well, we're going to have the weights, right? Um, the weight on little m and the weight on big m, and then the tension in the upper cable. Um, in order to find the tension in the lower cable, we're have to going to have change the system. So let's look at the upper cable first. Um, we're going to get constant speed. So that means that the, the net force the net force is 0. Oh, I already wrote it. I wrote it again. Yeah, OK. All right, so what are all the forces acting on our system here? OK, well, we have mg down, little mg. Uh, pulling us down. We also have the pulling us down is big MG, and we have tension force in the other direction. Um, I guess we should call that up. Huh? Let's call that. Ah, let's change this up. Let's call T positive minus little MG minus big MG. All right, and then with this this middle cable is internal to the system, so it's not it's not doing anything, right? Because it's pulling down on one thing, pulling up on the other thing, so it cancels itself out. Um, we know the net force is zero, and the uh, for the system. So we're gonna. This is tension in the upper cable, right? Upper cable. So we're just going to add both of these over. So the tension in the upper cable is gonna equal the weight of the big um, box plus the weight of the little hook, and that's gonna be uh, 100 plus 20. So the tension in the upper cable must equal 120 newtons and there we go all right and then the lower cable the lower uh, cable is only supporting the weight of the big box right look at the look at the uh, free body diagram for the big m um, the only uh, force that is opposing the weight of the big M box is the lower cable tension. So that means that the lower cable tension, since the net force is zero, right, they must cancel out. So that means that the lower cable tension must equal big MG, which is 100 newtons. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. That's part A. Questions on that? Let me know if you have any questions on that one. And now, what about if the if we accelerate everything up at one meter per second squared? All right. So now, let's go down a little bit. If we are accelerating up at one meter per second squared, that means the net force is no longer zero. Well, what is the net force? Well, if we know acceleration, uh, net force equals mass times acceleration. If we know the acceleration is one, and we know the mass of the system, right? Everything accelerating up at one was as a two two plus ten, so twelve, right? is 12, then we know that the net force is a mass and acceleration is 12. 12 newtons is the net force. Well, remember I told you guys I had no life, and you are my life. So there's, it, there's never been greater proof of the fact that I have no life than Saturday night streaming homework. Um, but you know, it is what it is. It's OK. All right. Um, okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing we just did, except now the, instead of the net force being zero, the net force is 12, right? So the net force um, 
equals the upper cable is supporting everything, right? Upper cable minus the weight down, minus the, or the, the weight of the hook, minus the weight of the big box. But this time, instead of being zero here, it's gonna be 12 Newtons is a net force equals upper cable tension minus uh, 20 minus 100. That, that's the weights of the hook and the box. Add 20 to the left, add 100 over to the left. So our upper cable tension is gonna be 132 newtons and then um, for the lower cable tension the exact same thing we just did but again um, this time we know that the the big m box has an acceleration of um of one so this time we're going to do a net it's not quite the same thing for the, lo the lower box i guess the lower cable the net force equals mass and acceleration but the let's isolate this box right let's make the system just that box that box's mass is 10 the acceleration is still one. That means the net force on just that box is 10, not 12, right? So the net force on, on that box is 12. So that means that the uh, the net force ah, the net force. Am I writing on my face? I don't know. The net force. No, I didn't. Okay, good. The net force equals. Uh, tension in the lower cable minus big mg this is 10 now instead of zero equals lower tension equals mg big mg was 100 oops not the equal sorry ah we distracted minus 100 sorry and then we add 100 over there so the tension in the lower cable can y'all see this on the bottom of the screen like that yes you can okay good so the tension in the lower cable equals 110 Newtons. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. Let's see. Um, fifteen, eleven. That one. What number did I just do? Is that fifteen? I don't even know. Yes, that's fifteen. All right. So, look that over. Does that make sense, guys? So, it, this is actually a really great problem. I'm glad we did this one because it's this is a really excellent practice in understanding how important it is to recognize, okay, what is the system, right? Yeah, and remember, you control what the system is. Is the system both masses? Is the system just one mass, right? And you can tell, like, that when we did the, the, the total mass, uh, I mean, the total system where everything, everything was included, that we ignored that the lower cable because it's kind of it literally, literally, literally physically in between the other masses. So um, hence, we can ignore it. Um, but then we focus on the, on the lower cable. We have to pick a system where the lower cable is external to that system. So we can't do the work. We can't find the tension in the lower cable if we may, if we keep the system the same as, as before. We have to change what the system is to find the tension in that lower cable. So really good problem there um, to practice on. Let's go to 11. We had a uh, request for number 11. So let's scroll back up. All right, another um, pulley system with two masses on it. All right. All right, uh, what do we got? We got a, two masses, again, hanging from the string, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we got friction this time or no? Frictionless. Okay, so we're gonna do one with friction and then one without friction. Okay, cool. Sounds fun. All right, um, little, our M1 has five kilograms and M2 has three kilograms. Uh, pass over string, ideal pulley. Okay, so no friction in the pulley or anything like that. Draw the forces acting on the masses in part one below. All right, so M1 has its own weight, M, M1G down and the normal force up, all right? They're gonna cancel. Now, they are external, but they're canceling, so we're not gonna worry about them, right? Because they're gonna cancel each other out anyway. We have the tension force to the right, and then we're gonna have friction to the left, at least in part, in part B we'll have friction. Let's go ahead and draw it on here now, since we'll have it in part B. Only for, only for part B though, right? Whoops. Yeah. Okay. Now M2, we have only two forces, weight down, M2G, and then the string tension up. All right, so if the table is frictionless, 
uh, determine the acceleration of the blocks and the tension in the str connecting string. All right, so this is what we talked about in class, right? We have to find acceleration first. There's no shortcut to finding tension first. You must find acceleration of the system, right? They're connected by a string, so think of it as one big object, okay? We're going to count um, counterclockwise. Think of the pulley as like a clock. So here's 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and all that. 9 o'clock over there. 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Uh, and then we're going counterclockwise up this way is going to be positive. And then if we're going clockwise, this way will be negative, right? Okay. So the acceleration of the blocks. What are the only forces on the blocks that are causing us to do any acceleration at all? Um, well, the tension is internal to the system, so not tension. The normal force and this normal force and this weight of M1G are canceling out, right? They are, again, I'll, I know I keep, I'm like beating a dead horse. They are external to the system, but they're going to cancel out. So they don't, they're, they cancel, so they don't do any, any, any work on the system. The tensions cancel. So what about the tension? What's, what's left over? Just M2G, right? That's it. M2G, M2G is the only force that's going to do anything to the system. It's the only one that's going to make it move, right? It's going to make it accelerate. Um, when there's no friction. In a minute, we'll add friction, but for now, with no friction, M2G is the only one. That means that the net force, there's our Newton's second law, the net force in this whole system is just M2G. M2 at a mass of 3 times 10 is 30 over the mass of the system, which is going to be 8, 5 plus 3. That means our acceleration is, I don't know, I can't do math. Um, 30 over 8, 3.75. Oh, meter second squared, and it is positive. No, it should be negative, though, right? Yeah, because the net force is actually negative. So it should be a negative, actually, right? Because technically the net, the net force in this thing is down, which we say was down this way, is down, so negative, yeah. All right, what is the tension in the, in the connecting string? Okay, so now we get to, now we get to um, the tension. Um, and I said this before in, in one of the class, I think I said in the fourth period, but whenever you're gonna try to find tension in the string, always pick the um, the object, right? You have to we have to zoom in and change the system. Now we're gonna make the system M2. Okay. And when I pick I picked M2 for a reason. It has fewer forces acting on it. Okay. Um, it only has two forces acting on it, weight and tension. Whereas M1 has three forces acting on it. It's just easier to solve for tension on the object with fewer forces acting on it. Okay, it just is. So here's what we're gonna do. Now we know acceleration is negative 3.75. Now we know that. So we're gonna set up Newton's second law again. This time I'm gonna set up this way. I'm gonna say that the net forces equals MA. And remember, now our system is just M, the M2 block. Okay, so what are our net forces? Well, we have the tension pulling us up minus the weight of the object pulling us down, that's M2G. Those are the only forces acting on M2, right? And that's going to equal the mass of M2, which was 3 kilograms, times its acceleration, which is negative 3.75. And then we're going to solve for tension. So uh, tension is going to equal, we're going to add M2G over here. So 3 times negative 3.75 is 11.25. And then we're going to add the weight over, so it's negative 11.25 plus the weight. Oh, you know what? Actually, this weight is negative already. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Um, so plus, what was the weight of it? 30. So 11, negative 11.25 plus 30. So I get 18.75. So tension in this rope is 18.75 newtons. And that's in the positive direction, which makes sense. It's pulling it up this way. It also makes sense that the tension in the rope is less than the weight of the object because we know it's accelerating down, right? So the net force must be down, which means the weight force must be greater than the tension up. So this makes sense. 18.75 newtons. What's 30, Asad? Oh, you're O. Oh. Yeah, I know. I'm a little slow sometimes. All right, so that's that's um, that's part A. That's with no friction. So let's go ahead and add friction in there now. It's not going to change actually too much. The only thing that's going to change now is that instead of um, all the forces, the external forces acting on the block uh, being just the this weight force is going to be the weight force also and also the friction force. Right? 
Um, so we have to calculate that. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to B here, part B. If the table has a coefficient of kinetic friction equal to 0.3, determine the acceleration of the blocks. All right, so what is the force of friction then? It'll be the coefficient of friction, 0.3, times the normal force. In this case, go back and look at our free body diagram. The weight force down on the M1 block is equal to the normal force on the M2 block, right? In this case, they are the same. So that means that the normal force will equal the weight of the M1 block. So normal force will be 50, uh, 50 newtons. So our friction force is going to be 0.3 times 50, which is 15. I should have known that. 15 newtons. Okay. And that's going to be in the positive direction, right? Because that's, yep. So it's actually a positive friction force. So that means that our now our acceleration is going to be the net forces over the mass of the system, right? Now, what are all the forces acting on the block? Well, again, we still have that negative, the weight force on M2G, right? We still have this one pulling us down, but now we have a friction force and opposing that pull, right? Going back up the table that way. So we're going to have a positive friction force, which was 15, minus the weight of M2G, which was 30, over the mass of the system, which we said was 8, right? Yeah, 8. So now our acceleration is... 15 minus 30 over 8, there's a negative 15 over 8, and that's going to be 1.9. 1. 1. Negative 1.9, that's an A, sorry guys, my handwriting is terrible. 1.9 meters per second squared, right? Net, net forces over mass. Okay, new second law. All right, now what about the tension in the, str in the connecting string? <laughs> Well, so you can make it negative if you want, but that you know, so long as you're consistent within the problem, it doesn't make, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, now what tension of the string? Uh, let's see. Um, okay, uh, again, we're gonna now, especially now, we do not want to choose M1 as our system, right? Because now it's got four forces acting on it. That's a that's a big pain in the butt. We want to do M2 again, right? And make M2 our system. And let's find the tension of the string. Um, we know the acceleration. Our net force, excuse me, is mass times acceleration. We know the, the net forces are the tension up the string minus M2G, excuse me, down the string, equals uh, MA, the mass was uh, 3, times a negative 1.9. That means tension is going to equal 3, point, 3 times 1.9. Uh, which and then I'm going to add into G, so add the 30. So now tension is 24.3, 24.3 newtons. Again, it's up, uh, up in the positive direction, so it's up the rope this way. And again, it makes sense that it's a little bit more now, right? Because the the tension it's not going to accelerate as fast, um, but it's still less than 30, which is good because it's the net force on M2 should still be down, right? So the tension should still be less than its own weight. So that makes sense. So we're still good. Um, so hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. All right. So hmm. remember, so the sign just positive or negative don't really have any special meaning. It just means direction. So you know. All right. So that was uh, part A and B. Anything else? Any other problems we want to do? Post them in chat. All right, let's go to number five then. I know some other students had asked about number five, so I'm going to go to number five now. All right, and I know I apparently messed up on the key because it was nine, I know the total mass is 19. But let's go ahead and solve this one anyway. Is it similar to the problems we did before, right? Except now we have two pulleys, but it doesn't matter. One pulley, two pulleys, three pulleys, wouldn't make a difference, okay? No problem, it's not any time. All right, so let's go ahead and decide right now which what direction is what. Let's call this way along the rope positive, and let's call this way along the rope negative. So that means as we go down this way, this way will be positive, and if we go this way down and on, on this pulley, that's going to be negative, right? Let's decide right now so we agree uh, on the number. Oh, Susanna, I actually did number four already, I believe. Oh, no, I didn't. Just kidding. Okay, we'll do that next, uh, Susanna. Four. Okay. Um, 
All right. Now we have our directions clear. Let's start off with a free body diagram for both blocks. So M1 has weight M1 G down and the tension force tension force up. We have in for block M2, it's a larger weight force down, right? Longer arrow. M2 G, tension force up. Okay. Um, what is the acceleration of the system of the blocks? All right. Well, you know, same old, same old deal, right? Um, the tension forces is internal to the system, so they're not going to do anything. They're not going to cause the system of blocks to accelerate at all. The only forces that are going to do anything to our system are the the weights of the blocks. And again, careful direction here. Uh, the weight of M2 is positive. The weight of M1 is negative, right? Because we have to think about direction with the pulleys. Okay, I know they're both down right colloquially down but the pulleys make things weird so make sure you're careful with the directions all right so the acceleration is going to equal the net force over the mass uh, that means that the net force uh positive is m2g minus m1g over the mass of the system which is 19 7 plus 12. so that means the acceleration will be let's see m2 was a uh, 120 and minus 70 over 19, so acceleration of the uh, this will be uh, 50 over 19, and that's going to be 2.6 meter per second squared. And again, I know I messed the key up on that one, but uh, sorry about that. But anyway, all right. Um, tension in the what is the tension force in the rope? Okay, now we know acceleration. Let's pick a block. In this case, since they both only have two forces acting on them, it doesn't make a difference which one we do. Uh, which, which, um, yeah, I know, I, I mentioned that. It doesn't matter which uh, block we pick, since they only both only have two forces on them. So let's just go with M1. So on M1, um, we know the net forces equal mass and acceleration. It's a different, a different form of Newton's second law. The, the forces on M1 block are the tension up minus its own weight down, M1g, equals his mass, which is 7, times acceleration, which was 2.6. We're going to add mg to the right side of the equal sign there. So we're going to hit 7 times 2.6 plus M1g, which was 70. Oops. 2.6 plus 70. 88.2 newtons. And again, we want to ask ourselves, does this make sense? Remember, the tension force should be larger than this guy's weight, but smaller than the big boy's weight, right? Because the big boy's net force should be down, and the small guy's uh, net force should be up. So tension should be larger than M1's weight, but less than M1, M2's weight, right? All right, so there we go. Um, okay, and then number four. All right, any questions about these problems? No, all right. All right, a child exerts a force of eight, uh, a force on a mass, on an M equals eight kilogram box that is parallel to an incline where the angle is 30 degree, right, 30 degree angle. Write that in there. Mass is eight kilograms. Um, so the box moves up the plane at constant speed. Constant speed. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the plane is 0.6. All right, so mu 0.6. All right, so we have lots of stuff to do here. Calculate the normal, normal force of the box. And then the component of the weight, box's weight force that is parallel to the plane. Frictional force. And then finally, we're going to find the applied force. Okay. Cool. All right, this is a good one. Um, <clears throat> normal force of the box. First, we got to draw a free body diagram, which is why the space exists here. So let's draw a free body diagram for this box. We have the weight straight down, mg. We're gonna have normal force of this way. We have an applied force up the ramp, and we're gonna have two forces down the ramp. Right? We're gonna have um, the component of gravity down the ramp, and then we're also gonna have the friction force. God, I cannot draw straight lines. Friction force down the ramp. 
They're both down the ramp, right? Both of those guys. And they're also going to have the component of the weight force going into the ramp perpendicular to the ramp there, right? And then remember the angle. If we draw it this way consistently, we always know that the angle here corresponds to this bottom part of the triangle. So that's, that angle there is also 30 degrees, okay? Normal force of the box. Well, the normal force is not the weight of the box, right? Because we're on an inclined plane. The normal force, uh, you know what? Actually, I should have drawn some blue. Let's draw let's do this again. I'll do some blue. I'm going to draw all, all of my um, perpendicular forces in blue. And let's do all of the parallel forces to the plane, right? To the surface in red. Is that way we're consistent? Okay. So remember, the only purpose of the um, straight down weight force is to help us find components in problems like this when we're on an inclined plane. So we're going to use use it to find the component there. This this blue component of gravity here and this guy here must be equal. Or they got to cancel out because the blocks is not accelerating off the plane or into the plane, right? Into the air. So they must be equal to each other. That means the net that means the force normal force must equal mg cosine theta. All right. So that's going to be mg is 80 cosine 30. 69.3 newtons, there we go. Uh, part B wants us to calculate the component of the box's weight force that is parallel to the plane. Okay, so basically we just want to calculate that red component right down the plane. So that's going to be at, um, mg sine theta. Uh, sine, of, sine of 30 is a half, so that's going to be 40. So that, that component there is, erase that, sorry, mg sine of 30, sine of the angle, is going to be uh, 40 newtons. All right, that's that right component right there. Okay. Part C, calculate the frictional force acting on the block. All right, well, now that we have the normal force, friction force is easy to find. Oops. Friction force is the mu times the normal force. So we have both of those things. Mu was 0.6, normal force 69.3, plug it in, and we're gonna get 41.6. Okay, calculate the force applied by the student to the box. Well, we know it's when we get constant speed. That means that the net force must be zero. There's no acceleration, so therefore no net, no net force. Um, so if we look at, um, if we know net force is zero, I just wrote it, I'm writing it again. Like, what? All right, if we know net force is zero, then look at our free body diagram, guys. All the red, all the red forces must cancel out, right? The, apl the applied force up the ramp positively, right, call that positive, minus the friction force down the ramp, minus that red component of the weight force, that other red arrow down the ramp, which we said was, um, which we said was uh, 40, 40 newtons, must equal zero, right? It has to, because it's constant speed and that force is zero. So let's add all this stuff over to this side, plus 40, plus the friction force over, these, so we have these cancel, right? Plus 40 here, plus, Friction force to this side, and we're going to get um, the applied force is going to equal 40. The friction force was 41.6, so 41.6, and that's going to equal 81.6 newtons. So there we go. All right. And there you have it. All right, so I'll, wait. I'll give it a few more minutes here um, for you guys. If you're looking to ask a question or if you have any other problems that you want to do, uh, we did quite a few. There aren't as many people on chat tonight, uh, probably because it's Saturday night. It makes sense, but let's see. We did, we did an inclined plane problem with friction. We did several pulley problems. Um, we did the ones that are in contact. With each other. We, did, we did one of these uh, multiple objects hanging from a... Um, uh, uh, t multiple objects with tension problem. I'll do one more that I want to do with you guys. I want to do number um, seven. So I'll do number seven, and then if there are no more requests, we'll end the stream. 
And then, uh, oh, number two, okay. Why don't we do two first? Ah, come on, two is just the same as we just did. I mean, how is one and two any different? Think about it. Fine, we'll do it. How can I say no to George Washington? I mean, really. Okay. He's the president and the father of, the, of America. Jocelyn, it's already published, actually. You can, it's on the, it's on my channel. I just didn't send a link to it. Um, okay, so for this guy here, um, we got a five kilogram object set it uh, on incline and angle thirty degrees. <clears throat> the block accelerates down the down the incline at two meters second squared. What is the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the brick? Oh, okay. All right. So if we know, um, let's do our free diagram first. So let's draw a little dot here for the cart. We have our weight down mg. Let's uh, get our different colors for different uh, per per uh, perpendicular. Normal force going this way. Ah, not very. That's not very good. I can do better than that. Up that way for normal force. Um, and then we're gonna have this component, uh, the red horizontal component going uh, friction force up the ramp. And they're also gonna have the weight force down the ramp, right? Parallel to the surface, the component of the weight force. And they're also gonna have that blue um, blue component of the weight force going into the ramp. I didn't mean to do that. This way. Okay. So that should be pretty much it. This is friction force here. Okay. And then we just got to keep track of our forces. Remember the angle is here, right? The bottom part of the triangle always corresponds with the angle there. So the angle is 30 degrees. So let's see. Um, if we know the acceleration is 2, then what must the net force be? So let's do Newton's second law. Net force equals mass and acceleration. We know the acceleration is 2. We know the mass is 5. So that means the net force must be 10, right? 5 times 2 is 10. So the net force must be 10. Or it has to be, okay, down the ramp. Well, that means that all the, the net force equation for the forces down the ramp, which is equal to the mg sine of the angle, oops, G sine theta uh, minus the friction force, we know all this together, if we subtract them, must equal 10, right? It has to add up to 10. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna replace the net force with 10 equals mg sine theta. Sine of 30 is a half. Mg is 50, so that's 25 minus friction force. We're going to um, add friction force over here, add friction force to this, to this side, and then subtract 10 from here. So we get friction force equals 15 newtons. So we know the friction force must be 15 newtons up the ramp, right? Okay. So that was number two. You're welcome, George Washington. Hope you were, hope that made you happy. <laughs> Thank you, George. Sorry, Quan. I know I, I snuck out early on Friday before you got there. All right, um, so that was two. Let's go to seven. That was a quest for number seven. I think I did. Oh, yeah, I was going to do seven next, actually, Kwan. That was the one I wanted to do. So great minds think alike, right? Okay, um, all right, number seven. And just in case you're, if you're joining the stream late, I have done, in case you were wondering, I did number one and two. Um, we skipped three, but it's very similar to the other ones. We did four. We did five. We're about to do number seven. We did eight. Um, we did 11, and we did uh, 14 and 15. So I think I know we didn't do um, 13 or 12, but I think if you can, do, if you can do, if you know, we did one like this, like a like a number 11, which is more complicated than number 12 or 13 because there's no you know surface that it's resting on, so it's even easier. The only forces on these masks are weight and tension, so they should be even easier than um, than these ones. So I think you'll handle it on your own. Uh, well, I, I want to do seven. If you can do seven, you can do six. So they're, they're basically the exact same problem. Um, it just seven has an extra box thrown in there. All right, so let's draw um, 
it gives us the, the a force applied uh, in the front here, pulling this system of boxes that are all connected with a rope. And it gives us the mass of each one. So the big one's 15 kilograms, the next one is 10, and the small one is 5. The, masses are, uh, the system of masses are accelerated together across a frictionless horizontal surface. Draw the forces on each mass and on the system of masses. So on M1, uh, we got the weight of M1, G down, normal force up, and then we have this, let's call this uh, T1, let's call this T2, the rope, this rope is T1, this tension rope is T2, and applied force, so T1 here. Now on M2, we have down M1, G, uh, up, normal force, oh, sorry, it's M2, G, sorry, M2, G, plus the normal force up. To the right, we have t the tension in two, and to the left, we have tension of rope one falling us back. On M3, we have the, no the M3 G down, the normal force up. We're going to have the applied force to the right, this is called F, and we'll have T2 pulling us back. Now you'll notice again <clears throat> that once we connect all these boxes together, right, all these tension forces are going to cancel, right? Look at our individual free body diagrams. T1, I have one T1 arrow to the left and one T1 arrow to the right, they cancel. I got one T2 arrow to the right and one T2 arrow to the left, they're going to cancel. Um, so hopefully you're noticing that. Now, it wants to draw this the uh, free body diagram for the system of masses M1 and M2. Well, M1 and M2, so let's look at look at right here, right? M1 and M2. What are the forces on M1 and M2? Well, they both have a T1 connecting them, right? So it's internal to the system, so it doesn't do anything, so we don't have to draw it. We have the total mass of the system going down. That's M1 plus M2 times G. We have the normal force up, and we're going to have uh, T2 to the right, right? Those are the only forces acting on that system. The tension in rope one, the T1 force, tension force cancels, and then so all that's left over is T2, and then yeah, there you go. Now, what about all three masses together? Well, again, look at look at the individual free body diagrams, right? Let's look at all everything together. So, like I just said, the T1 and T1, left and right, they cancel. T2 right, T2 left, they cancel. The only force that's actually going to do anything to this system is the big force F. And we're going to have normal force up. And then down, we're going to have all the forces M1 plus M2 plus M3 times G, right? All that stuff added up. That's the weight down. No force to the left, right? Only force to the right. What is the tension in the string between M1 and M2? All right, so. If we're trying to find the tension between on M1 and M2, then we have to look at a system where, where the tension uh, is external to the system, right? So we can't pick the whole system, um, the tension in the stream between M1. So we're looking for this guy, right? We're looking for T1. So we have to pick either M1 as our system or M2 as a system. I'm going to pick M1 because it has fewer forces acting on it, right? So that's the one I'm going to pick. Now we know. Um, oh, we gotta find acceleration first, don't we? Because we, yeah, we gotta find acceleration. All right. So, what is the acceleration of the, of the whole thing? Everything together, right? The acceleration of the system is the net force. Well, the only force actually doing anything to the system is is this applied force, right? All the tensions are internal; they cancel out. The normal forces and the and the weight forces are all going to cancel out, right? We're on a horizontal surface, so they cancel. Um, so, the net force is 500 newtons to the right. The mass. Um, is the sum of the masses, which is going to be uh, 10 plus 15 plus 5, so that's 30. So the acceleration of the system is 500 over 30, which is 15? 16.7. 16.7 meter per second squared. Okay. And then uh, once we have the acceleration, now we find the tension uh, in that rope. So we know that the force, net force is equal mass. Now on M1, now now our system will just will just be M1 block, right? Not the whole thing, but just block M1. Its mass was 5. Its acceleration we now know is 16.7. What are all the forces on M1? Well, we have a normal force and a weight force, but they cancel because they're in opposite directions. The only force left over is T1. So that means T1 force must be equal to 5 times 16.7, which is 83.5 newtons. And there you go. What is the tension in the stream between M2 and M3? So now we're trying to find 
M2, right? And again, I, I want to pick a system where the T2 force is external to that system, right? External. Now, I think the easiest one to pick is this system here because it has the fewest forces on it. So let, let's imagine that M1 and M2 are one block, right? And the room to the right. You can also pick one of these ones if you wanted to, um, but I don't like that because there's more forces on them, right? We got to consider the T1 and T2. We don't have to do that if we pick, uh, if we pick this one. All right, so let's do that. Um, again, we know acceleration. Everything is accelerating at the same rate, 16.7 meters second squared. So the tension in the string between M2 and M3. All right, so we know uh, net force equal to um, the mass of M1 plus M2. That's going to be 15 kilograms times our acceleration, which again is 16.7. And then we're going to say, okay, well, there's only one force pulling that system of blocks. And that's the T2 tension force, right? That's, that's it. So the T2 must be 15 times 16.7, which is 25. Wait, oh, 250. Sorry, I look back and be right. 250 newtons. 250.5, but you know whatever. I guess 251, right? 250.5 newton. There you go. Okay. And there you go. Okay. Now again, if, number six. Um, if you, some people ask about number six, but it's I mean, it's exact, it is exactly the same problem, right? Just instead of having three blocks, you got two. So if you can do, if this one makes sense, then six will be easy, right? Okay, um, I'll give you a, a few minutes to a, uh, ask a few more questions if you have anything. Uh, if not, we'll end it here. We covered pretty much everything. Um, Okay. All right, looks like, oh, no, it's almost number nine. I was just about to say, oh, look, oh, I thought my word was going to crash. Okay, so nine, I mean, we, we did, honestly, we did, um, we did 15. So I'm not going to do nine. I'm going to say, look, I'm going to say go over 15 again. The video will upload to YouTube and you can, you can rewatch 15. 15 is exactly the same as number nine, except instead of a hook and a crane, it's like a helicopter. But it really is the same thing. Jocelyn, what's wrong? What are you planning for? What's the matter, Jocelyn? What's wrong? You don't want the stream to be over? You want to keep going all night? I'm, I'm, I'm going to challenge you to do number nine on your own. So watch 15, or whatever that problem was. I just did with the hook, the hook and the crane or whatever. Watch that one over again. And then try to run your nine on your own. Okay, think about uh, how the um, the in, this this cable is between the, the helicopter and, and the car, so it's an internal force, right, to this, this total system. And then you have instead of the upper cable, you have the rotor the rotor force of the helicopter, like being being uh, pulling you up instead of a, a cable. It's the helicopter blade spinning. Okay, uh, one more minute. Let me know if there's anything else. I think we've pretty much covered it here. Um, I don't think it, I don't think there's any problem left that you couldn't do from watching a different problem that we already did. A sleeping stream? Yeah, suggest yes, please suggest a good sleeping stream. Yesterday I got home from work at, six, at like at like five thirty, and I crashed at six o'clock. I passed out. I passed the fuck out at six o'clock, and I woke up at like a ten thirty. Like PM, like last, like like Friday night. It was ten thirty. I woke up. I slept for like four and a half hours. I woke up and I was like, "What am I doing?" So I, I tried to go back to bed, but I couldn't sleep. So I stayed up for like four hours, like just you know, farting around on the internet or whatever. And I went back to bed at like five a.m. And then I woke up at ten a.m. Such a mess, man. I was so tired. So yeah, so just a good sleeping stream. Help me, help me fall asleep. I did not do three, um, but again, it is a, it is, it is almost like identical number two except that there's a force going up the ramp instead. So 
I really would prefer if you, you know, I, I, don't, I really don't want to do every problem, <laughs> you know. I want you to kind of like put it together yourself, right? Think about, you know, follow the steps on number two. And it's a very similar problem. It's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. Um, the only the only weird thing about number three I'll tell you is that it it gives you this, this side of the triangle and this side of the triangle. And you have to um, find the angle using trigonometry. So I'll, I'll help you find the angle here. Um, tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. What we have, if this is the angle we need, um, then uh, we have the opposite side of the triangle and we have the adjacent side of the triangle. So we actually find the angle using tangent here. We're gonna do, uh, in, we're gonna find the angle by doing the inverse tangent of uh, of six over eight because that's opposite and, that's, and eight, eight is adjacent. So the th eight, the angle here theta is I forget it's like thirty something I think, but uh, inverse tangent of six over eight. Yeah, thirty six point nine. So call it thirty seven degrees is fine. So I'll help you with that part of it. I think you need that part to find out what the forces are. Um, so there you go. Um, that's a little trick to help you find that angle there. All right, I think we're going to end the stream. Uh, we went for a little over an hour, so not bad. We did about half the problems. So again, uh, I did I did one problem of every kind of type. So if I didn't do the exact one that you're having problems with, I probably did one that was very similar to the one you're having problems with. So go back and watch that one. All right, guys, um, there is a video out right now over pulleys so it might help you um, go over some of the steps um, it's, a, it's just a lecture video that you need to take notes on and uh, and watch I want to make another one tonight like right now as soon as in the stream over tension um, and then and then we'll do uh, springs probably uh, I'll make that probably tomorrow all right guys um, have a great night thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the stream hope it was beneficial it'll be uploaded uh, to the channel uh, shortly um, all right guys, have a great night Email me or mind any questions at all. I had no life. You are my life. Goodbye.